Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to look at a couple of small swords we just finished and a couple of original small swords in the Oakshot Institute collection. Uh, so we can do a little compare and contrast in education. Stay tuned. So small swords were primarily a civil sword or a uniform sword from the 18th century. And these derived from rapiers uh, but they are much smaller, much lighter, right? You can see that the blade on this is about, oh, maybe 30 inches long, maybe 28. Uh, this is an original, um, maybe French, I really don't know. We'd have to look into it a little bit, but it has the iconic form, right? With this little kind of urn-shaped pommel, a small knuckle bow, right? And this uh, symmetrical uh, guard with some remnant little quillins in there that aren't for sticking your finger through. You can't get your finger through there. They're decorative and they're essentially an evolutionary remnant. And so when you hold these small swords, you hold them in your hand like this. I usually put one finger up here, a pink, uh, my pointer finger up in those rings and then you can hold it loosely in your hand, which gives you edge control, right? So sport fencing is really based on fighting with these weapons, which were essentially a dueling weapon and, uh, you know, something you'd wear out uh, to fight people with, right? This wasn't a military weapon. So this one, I would say, is... Oh, maybe from 1750, something like that. Here, oh, another thing you can look at is that this has a hollow ground diamond section on the blade, right? Which makes it very rigid. All this is is a poker, right? You can't cut particularly with this. I mean, if you whip someone with it, it'll hurt, but it's not going to kill them by cutting with them unless you were extraordinarily lucky and they were laying there with their juggler veins sticking out or something. It's really not designed for cutting. Even less cutty uh, than a rapier. This sword weighs, well, certainly less than a pound. <laughs> uh, you can compare that to one of ours, right? So this is one of our small swords. It is a little different uh, than this guy, but it's based on a different historical original. It's all in the same family. This one's got a little bit bigger place to put your finger, which I kind of enjoy. It sticks in the hand better. Uh, same kind, a triangular blade that we hand grind uh, to have those hollow grinds in it. Nice and stiff. This thing has a vicious point. I can get it on the camera. Ooh, dangerous. Uh, Ooh, it's like a fish hook out there. Super light, uh, just about the same length as this original piece. Now, we've recently done some videos about gluing, and one of the reasons I wanted to uh, do this video today is we just happened to have a blued small sword and a non-blued small sword uh, done at the same time. Uh, they're both sharp, uh, so you can see how the two of them look. Uh, with these two different finishes. It's just decorative, right? Just decorative. And in the past, they used bluing decoratively too, along with gilding, right? So here we have what I would call a bit more of a transitional side sword, right? It has a hexagonal sectioned blade, right? So it's essentially a diamond section with the ridge ground flat and decorative bluing and gilding uh, on this blade. The whole hilt is gilt. Uh, these were fancy, honestly. Small swords are in very poor taste. They're super gaudy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love them. But, uh, you know, bluing and gilding and stuff was all the rage on these. Some later ones are pretty much covered with rhinestones, right? They're all glittery uh, and silver. Uh, some are also relatively plain, like the model we make, which, you know, we chose the one that we kind of like, <laughs> which is the simpler one. Uh, but 
if you were feeling crazy, you could totally get your hilt gilded. Uh, gold's expensive right now, but <laughs> you can do it. Uh, as you can see, some of this decorative uh, bluing work on this one. So, small swords, pretty cool. They're always light, reasonably fast. They have this stirrup uh, knuckle bow, little tiny quillins that are kind of remnant and usually a symmetrical guard. Blades can be triangular or they can be diamond or they can be hexagonal. Most of the iconic ones uh, are triangle, but they certainly haven't historically uh, with other kinds of blades and we occasionally make them uh, with diamond section blades uh, that are a little bit earlier uh, and give you some capacity to cut while still behaving pretty much the same uh, way in terms of weight and balance and everything like that. So small swords are cool, go get them.